doing well? We are very, very busy. We have some, ooh, we have some projects starting, but more importantly, right in the middle of our projects, uh, we've got to dive into this uh, CCRL sample or proficiency sampling program, which I believe happens every year. Um, and we're going to spend the next few days going over the ins and outs of this, giving you a quick peek into what we have to do, or, or one part of what we have to do to keep up our qualifications, but we'll get more into that. What I wanted to talk to you about today was the uh, butter mix. Now, the butter mix is part of ASTMC 192. It's a requirement when you're doing uh, your concrete and lab mixes, or lab and concrete mixes. And not a very popular thing to do. Hey babe, what do you think about butter mixes? I have mixed feelings about butter mixes. So there you go, Whitney has mixed feelings about butter mixes. What are your feelings about CCRL? I have no qualms about it. I don't care for CCRL. So ASTMC 192, it is the standard that gives you the uh, operating procedures for a concrete mix design in the lab. And it's a very you know, rudimentary process that has certain steps to it. Now, the most important part is the mixing of the concrete, but something that folks often ignore is the butter mix. Butter mix is used for buttering up the mixer, hence the name the butter mix. And what we mean by that is when you take your concrete out of the mixer after it goes through the 332 process or the 3 minute, 3 minute, 2 minute process of mixing um, and you're dropping into your, uh, you know, your, your, your vessel, if you will, um, there's going to be a certain amount of paste that's going to be left in the drum. Now that paste was actually meant to be designed for not only this, the fresh properties, but also your hardened properties too. So if you're leaving that paste in the drum, you're not including it on or in your mix and you're gonna get some results that could be skewed. So the reason why we do a butter mix is that it gives us a truer value of what the design concrete is going to be both in our fluid state as well as in our hardened state to have that additional paste. Um, now, why don't people use it? Well, first of all, it's a certain portion of your mix design. We do somewhere between 45 and 55 percent, depending on the size of the mix and the size of the mixer. Uh, we might even go higher than that if we want to get a better idea of what the mix is going to look like. Um, but it is a representative portion of your original concrete mix design. And for every mix that you do, you got to do a new butter mix. You can't reuse, you know, some people say that you can throw a hydration stabilizer and make that mix last, but the unfortunate reality is that you're changing up the mix and that paste now is going to have an impact on your fresh and hardened property. So it is a pain in the butt. That being said, it is a requirement. The, the second thing that folks like to argue is that it's not realistic to the ready mix operations. Like when we make a ready mix truck, a ready mix truck full of concrete, we're not buttering up the ready mix truck. And oftentimes, most ready mix providers have their drivers wash out their truck. So if anything, the drum that we're using is a cleaner drum than what we're creating here in the lab with the butter mix. But that's not the point of what we're doing here in the lab. And this is what folks often lose out on. The purpose of our lab materials you know, what we, the concrete that we make in the lab is, is to give us that perfect scenario. What does the design of the concrete, the bookcrete, look like when we make it in the lab? Labcrete and fieldcrete, while they still might have the same designs and the same properties, they are two totally different monsters. What we want to see from the lab is how this design will react in a perfectly controlled, or close to perfectly controlled, an ASTM controlled set of environments. That is the sole purpose of that. And in that perfect condition, or that ASTM condition, we see what that concrete can do. Now from there, 
when we go out to the field, we all know that our conditions change. Ambient conditions, our pouring conditions, our drive times. I mean, here in Colorado, there are certain times of the year that we can start out with 60 degree or even 20 degree weather and go up to 70 or 80 degree or start out with 60 or 70 degree and go down to 20 or 30 degree weather. So creating that environment in the lab helps us get an understanding of not only what that concrete will do in those different properties, fresh and hardened, but also the parameter changes that we employ to get different fresh and hard properties or different features and benefits out of our concrete. So the butter mix is one small piece of it, bringing this circle all the way around. That butter mix is a very important piece of it that shouldn't be ignored, that should be used, um, and it's not that bad. So we're going to go through it today, um, and it is part of the CCRL. So if you look through the CCRL, you have mixing instructions, and we're going to go into that. But um, let me just find that. C1, C, ASTM C192 note 14, buttering the mixer option. Um, and basically what we're going to do is uh, get a, you know, prior to mixing the test material, the mixer should be buttered using aggregate and a non-air and training cement other than supplied by the Cement and Concrete Reference Laboratory. Um, so we've got those materials locally sourced. We're going to throw them into the mix. Go concrete! Beat asphalt!